Let my people go. Thus saith the Lord. Before we even get into it, leave Prince of Egypt at the door, okay? Leave it at the door. I know we all love it. It's a great movie. But we're talking about the word of God now. Moses. Here we go. Let's get into it. So Moses was born in a time when the Pharaoh who was reigning in Egypt was like, hey, these Israelites, they got too much power. Kill all of the sons. Just kill them all. And Moses' mom was knocked down with that. So she hid him for three months until she couldn't hide him no more. And she put him in a basket and she sent him down the Nile River. We all know, right? And his sister Miriam was there watching him. And he comes to this place where Pharaoh's daughter picks him up out of the Nile. And I was like, whoa, a baby, awesome. And she's talking to Miriam, cause Miriam's there. Miriam's like, hey, do you want me to go get the baby's mother? She's finessing. Pharaoh's daughter's like, yeah, go get his mom. So they bring Moses' mom, she takes care of him until he's a little bit older, and then Pharaoh's daughter takes over. He becomes her son, she names him Moses. So one day when Moses was like 40 years old, all right, we jumped, we jumped. He's already been in the kingdom, he's been doing his duties. One day he's romping around and he catches sight of a Egyptian guard beating a Hebrew man. And I'm thinking, Miriam and Moses' mom had already told him what was up. They told him, you are not an Egyptian. You are Hebrew. So these is your people. Know what's right and wrong, okay? When he sees the Egyptian guard beating the Hebrew man, he's not about it. And he kills the Egyptian guard, buries him in the sand, runs away. That's that. It's a wrap. The next day, he saw these two Hebrew men arguing. And he's like, bros, why are we arguing? We're the same people. And these guys are like, who made you king? Who gave you authority when I know you killed that Egyptian man yesterday? Moses was big spooked, okay? So he was like, wow, well, they know, everybody knows what I did. I gotta get out. So he ran away right as Pharaoh was coming to kill him because Pharaoh knew what was going on. So this is what happens. Moses runs away to Midian, passes out by a well. All these daughters come up, the daughters of the high priest guy of the village or whatever, they come, they gotta do this watering business. Nobody's helping them. People are just being jerks. Here comes Moses, he wakes up, he helps them out and they're like, wow. Then they go back and the priest guy's like, wow, how did you get done so early? And they're like, this guy that passed out by the, by the well, he helped us. The priest, he's like, oh, bring him over here. Gotta thank that guy, right? So Moses goes, meets the priest. The priest gives him one of his daughters to marry and they live and they have some children. They have some babies. He lives his life for many, many years. At the same time, uh, the Pharaoh who knew Moses died and a new Pharaoh came into power and slavery for the Hebrews got a whole lot worse, okay? Because that guy sucks. And God heard the cry of the people and he was like, yeah, all right. I'm ready, I'm gonna send in my boy Moses. He's gonna save y'all. So one day, Moses is just doing his sheeply duties and he's getting them all and he sees a burning bush. And in the words of the great Justin Timberlake, he said, stop, let me get a good look at it. And checking out this bush because it's not burning away. Here comes God. Moses, Moses, Moses. Moses, thrown off. What? What? Yeah, here I am. Hello? God comes in, tells him, Hey, bro, pump the brakes. Pump, beep, beep. This is holy ground. Take off your crusty sandals. All right, my man? I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm here to talk to you, sir. So listen up. Moses now understood that this was real business. So he just was like, oh, okay, let me take my sandals off and bow my head, okay? God tells Moses, I've heard the cry of my people and I need you to go in and save them. So pick yourself up and go do work. 
But here comes Moses. Let's start with the excuses, all right? Learn something from Moses in the next part of this. When God tells you to do something, don't make excuses. Because he didn't ask you to do something for no reason, okay? All right. So Moses goes, but, but, who am I to do such a big job? And God is like, I'll be with you. Chill. Chill. It's all right. I got you. When you bring the people out, we'll all worship at the mountain. and worship me. It'll be great. Okay? And here comes Moses again. Okay. But hypothesize me this, God. When I tell them that God said to let these people go, and they ask me, who? Who do I say you are? God drops the line, all right? He says, I am that I am. Period. Period. You tell the Egyptians that. You tell them I am the God of their fathers. You tell the Hebrews that I am saving them. Period. I am that I am. Moses, again. Okay, but hear me out. Hear me out here, God. What if they don't listen? And they don't even believe me. And they go, well, we don't see your God in front of you. What the heck? What am I supposed to do then? Like... This doesn't sound like a great plan to me, God. God's getting really fed up with all these excuses, all right? And God's like, I'm gonna make this real easy. What's in your hand, man? Moses tells him, oh, it's a staff. And he says, okay, drop the staff on the ground. Just drop it. So Moses drops the staff on the ground. We know it turns into a snake. And Moses was a big chicken and he ran from the snake. He said, oop, ran from the snake. And God said, Chill, 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 chill. Reach out and grab its tail, okay? Moses did it, it became a staff again. God tells him. This is a sign that I mean business, okay? This ain't no game, this is real business. And if they don't believe that, I got this whole magic trick for you. You stick your hand in your coat pocket, you bring it out, leprosy, you stick it back in, gone. If they don't believe that, you take some of that water from the Nile boy and you turn it onto the ground, you tip it over and it'll turn into blood, okay? We got the whole thing set up for you. Moses still, still making excuses. All great things, God. All great things. But one more thing. Um, I can't really speak well. It's not my thing. I can never get past uh, public speaking. I never passed that class. So I can't do it. God is up here. He's done. It's like, Moses, chill out, bro. I got you. Chill out. You know what? Your brother Aaron is coming down. He will speak for you, all right? So let's just... Aaron and Moses start on the plan. They tell the Hebrew leaders what's going on, what God said. They believe them. And they're like, cool, here we go. They go to Pharaoh and they tell Pharaoh what God said. They said, Pharaoh, this is what's up. God said, let my people go. Or it's going to get really bad for you, sir. Pharaoh tells them, I don't know this God you speak of. Swerve, okay? Get out of my face. He worked the Israelites harder, claiming they were lazy, okay? He was just butthurt. They weren't lazy. He was butthurt. Moses goes to God, tells him, Hey, this ain't adding up. This map don't make sense. I went to set them free, and they are suffering more. One plus one equals two, right? So what's going on? And God tells him, Moses, don't count me out. I got a plan, all right? Pharaoh will get his just desserts, don't you fret. Am I not the almighty God? Okay, am I not him? But the Israelites were very discouraged. They were being worked super hard and they didn't know if God was actually gonna come through. God tells Moses, go back and talk to Pharaoh. Moses goes, but what if he doesn't listen to me? God says, boy, if you don't just go do this work, here's here, I'll let you know what the plan is. I will tell you. You do as I say. Aaron does the talking. Pharaoh, he won't listen. We already know that. He won't listen. That fool has a hard heart. Okay, he just, he doesn't have any feelings. So I'll show up big with some signs, some plagues, okay? And the Egyptians will know that I mean real business. Okay, meeting adjourned. Aaron and Moses, who, by the way, were in their 80s by this point, it's been a minute. They go to Pharaoh and they tell him again. God says, let my people go. So do it now or it's gonna get bad. And of course, Pharaoh said no. So 
Moses and Aaron. They showed God's power. Pharaoh thought he was a little smarter than them and he used his sorcerers to do the same thing with their secret magic. And it kind of looked like this. So get ready, here comes the list, all right? We get the snake staffs, blood in the Nile, infestation of frogs, all the gnats everywhere, to which the sorcerers could not replicate. And they said, that's only God. But Pharaoh was like, I don't care. Swarms of flies, dead livestock, boils, which suck, okay? Hail, daggum locusts, okay? At this point, Pharaoh's officials told him to give it up. They were tired, they were tired of these plagues and they told him give it up and Pharaoh was like, nah fam, we're still going. Okay. Suffocating darkness in the last plague, the death of all the firstborns. Whew. That makes me tired. It's a long list. With the last plague, God had given the people instructions on how to evade that, right? He told them, cover, cover your houses in the blood and you will not die. Your firstborns will not die. Straight up. At midnight, the spirit of the Lord came in. We know, you've seen the scene. And Pharaoh did not listen because what? He has a hard heart and he lost his son. He calls in Aaron and Moses. Hey, take your people, I'm done with this. I'm over it, take them and go. As the Israelites were leaving, they took a bunch of stuff from the Egyptians because God told them to ask for stuff and the people had it, so they got it, right? And they're on their mass exodus, they get to the sea and they notice um, Pharaoh and his chariots is on the way. Pharaoh had changed his mind. He was like, you know what, Ashley, I don't wanna let these people go. So he saddled up, got all his people, chased after them, right? And they all see this, they see them coming, they're freaking out. Moses is big freaking out. He's like, God, what the heck, what do I do? God is like, do you not know, do you not remember the power that I gave you? Like, strike your staff in the sea, boy, all right? He does that. We know, the sea splits. and it splits, they walk through. They're getting through, the Egyptians is trying to follow, but God, God is crafty, right? And so God closes the sea as the Hebrews go and the Egyptians come in. So it cuts them off and uh, none of these guys caught up to the Hebrews and they got out. So this story is so long, we won't even get into the 40 years where these people were complaining. We won't talk about that. But that is how God used Moses to free the people in Egypt, the Israelites. That's how we did it. Throw in a song or two if you want, you know, let, let my, my people, people go. go. And there it is. Guys, thanks for watching this video. Remember to click the like and the subscribe button. Um, I'm putting out videos every week, okay? Usually Thursdays, sometimes Fridays, who knows? But every week, so come out, enjoy learning about the stories of the Bible, laugh a little bit, come on the journey, share with your friends, and remember to stay funny. Stay funny.